I was selling meth, but my preferred drug was heroin. And at the worst, you know, I wasn't allowed, I didn't really have a place that I was living at. I would just spend the night wherever people would let me, or sometimes just wouldn't go to sleep. Once I found out about powerlifting, it definitely put me in another direction, and, but it was the thing that pulled me out when I, when I needed something. My name's Jeremy Avila, and I'm from Santa Rosa, California. Um, got into the sport just through a friend of mine about five and a half years ago. Um, never heard of powerlifting before that, um, so I got in a little bit late and just kind of caught on from some of my buddies that were already doing it. Yeah, so my current best lifts are uh, 804 uh, in wraps, 435 bench, and then the 887 uh, deadlift. So those are all the best ones I got right now. I work at the gym, so I coach some powerlifting classes as well as just some, like general fitness classes and personal training. Also work with people remotely online. Yeah, so, so far, I mean, my last meet was my best one. Um, totaled over 2,100, got 2,127, which put me in the top five all time for the 220 classic raw weight class. So, so far that's like my biggest achievement uh, in lifting, I would say. My athletic background before powerlifting was just football through high school. I played football from when I was eight through and then after that, I kind of just bro workouts in the gym here, you know, nothing too super consistent, but uh, just, you know, I'd find my way into the gym here and there. Yeah, so at my worst and with the drug use, uh, my days were just surrounded by getting more drugs. I was selling meth, but my preferred drug was heroin, but I would do a little bit of both. <laughs> um, so like a day for me would be, you know, try to contact people who you know, wanted what I had, you know, so I could make some money to support what I wanted to do. And, and at the worst, you know, I wasn't allowed, I didn't really have a place that I was living at. I was in my car mostly. I kind of just spend the night wherever people would let me or sometimes just wouldn't go to sleep and I'd just stay up. So yeah, meth's great if, you don't, if you're homeless because like your problem is you don't have money for food or to sleep and you don't need any of that stuff when you're doing meth. So great solution, <laughs> so I thought. Yeah, now my day-to-day -day is I wake up in the morning, I live with my uh, girlfriend, Irina. She always, you know, she's usually out the house before me, but she'll wake me up before she leaves, so I always usually see her first thing in the morning. Then I make some food, <laughs> yeah, in the house that I live in, <laughs> that I pay rent at. And, you know, get, get my food going, do a little work on the computer, uh, and then usually by like 11, I'll once I'm done working on the computer, working with my online clients, I'll head over to the gym, do my workout, and after that I'll head into the city to work, and then I'll come back home for some more food and sleeping. And I might watch some TV shows, maybe stay up till like 12 or 1, you know, get crazy. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much my day-to-day -day right now, and I love it. I didn't even know powerlifting existed, I didn't, I never really... I never had a clear vision of me doing anything other than what I was doing, because that's all, pretty much all I knew. Um, and then I kind of, once I got sober and kind of had my wits about me, I just kind of followed with whatever's in front of me and it kind of just led me here, you know? I just kind of tried to stay around good people and 
make better decisions and it kind of just, you know, naturally put me on this path. And yeah, once I found out about powerlifting, it definitely put me in another direction. And that's definitely not the only thing, you know, I got going on, you know, but it was the thing that pulled me out when I, when I needed something. <laughs> yeah, uh, the last time I overdosed, I was in the cardiac arrest. Um, the last thing I remember, I was with uh, two of my friends in the car. I'd been up for a long time and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't hit myself with the heroin, so I had my friend do it for me. And I'd been like two days since I'd done any heroin, so I was like pretty pumped to get some. <laughs> and the last thing I remember was just like, oh, it feels great. And I just woke up on the ground. Uh, and funny enough, the uh, paramedic was actually my friend's mom's boyfriend who knew me. So it was a weird situation because like, you know, you know the person, you know? It kind of makes it different, you know? So, yeah, so, yeah, they put me with the Narcan and told me, you know, if they were, you know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes later, that might have not, you know, worked out so well. <laughs> um, just anything that I can lose, I have lost. <laughs> but I'll go with the time that I was uh, competing at Old School Iron. A couple years ago, I, uh, Got there about 15 minutes before I was supposed to squat and so I had a 15 minute warm up, made two out of three of my squats and then I, uh, for bench press I forgot my shirt and then when I got up to the front they were like you gotta go get a shirt so I had to run to the back get my shirt within a minute, put it on like backwards and inside out and did my bench opener. Um, I mean I have sleeves, shoes, I mean that's, that's probably the best one though because it's kind of in front of everyone. <laughs> Oh yeah, so as we all know, not all gas stations are created equally. Some of them have a little bit better selection than others. So I have like a pretty good idea of like the gas stations to go to where I live, but you know, beef jerky, your rock stars, you know, you got everything, you know, you got all the food groups in that you really need on the go, so. And then the worst thing I've gotten from a gas station uh, was a uh, egg salad sandwich and actually, I. I texted, I don't know why I wanted the egg salad sandwich, but I texted it to Jesse and the guys to ask if I should eat it, and they all said yes, and it was, didn't turn out well. But that was the worst thing I ever had. It was, I had like two bites of it, and it's bad. Don't get egg salad sandwiches from gas stations. Uh, having the, the teammates I have at the gym on my was one of my, I mean, it's one of the best parts about lifting for me. Um, you spend so many hours with these people, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, three, four days a week, a couple hours together. And I just love, you know, being able to feed off the energy and like the in-house competition, you know, with each other and and just the sense of community, you know, that yeah, we have support and stuff. I, and there's a lot of lifters that, you know, go solo and they, they don't need other people. I, I really, I really like to have other people in the gym with me. Uh, I think it helps a lot on the days where I maybe don't have the energy or maybe not like the best mindset, you know, you have people to kind of maybe help you out a little bit with that, so. Yeah, my, my teammates are, uh, I love them, they're the best. <laughs>